Hi, welcome to Positively Sparking, a podcast on internet marketing, online productivity and business. Today I'm with Ricard Alma, one of the founders of Needle Analytics, a Google Analytics app that helps you find the most important pieces of information in your business quickly. Hi, Ricard. Welcome to the podcast. Hi, Phil. Nice to be here. <laughs> Great stuff. So, Ricard, you do quite a specific thing, which I think will interest our listeners. So tell us who you are and, and what you do. Well, um, yeah, well, my, my name is Ricard. I'm um, uh, from Sweden and uh, stumbled upon web analytics lots of years ago and uh, been stuck there ever since as a consultant and working on the client side and agencies and a couple of years ago i had been looking at lots of uh, web data uh, and seeing the same patterns over and over again and thought this might be automated so then i started uh, building a tool uh, together with my colleagues uh, which uh, we released a couple of months ago called needle which uh, which you featured couple of months ago and uh yeah that's that's probably who i am (laughs) so you're an analytics man um yeah um when when i when i stumbled upon web analytics it was uh that was like 10 years ago or something like that so it wasn't uh really a mature field and i would say still to this day it isn't uh but then it was uh what would you call it? I, I nobody else would pick it up uh, on my agency, so I kind of I was left with it uh, and uh, ran with it. So, uh, so it became your thing because you were the only person who wanted to do it as such. Yeah, I guess you could say that because uh, web analytics is it's kind of a different beast because it's it's not statistics, it's not math, it's not programming, it's just something else and uh, I mean in, in the creative industry people tend to shy away from everything uh, that has to do with numbers uh, and uh, it's not it's not very logic as a uh, coding and it, it's not statistics either so so it's uh, it, it you could use it to tell whatever you want and I think that's the main problem mm. with web analytics uh, whatever kind of thing you want to say, it's uh, the data is there support, to support it. So, so Absolutely. you have to be very careful. A little bit like politics, perhaps. Yeah, I mean, it's that's. Uh, I mean, there is uh, the George Ekerlof, the the guy who won the Nobel Prize for uh, lots of years ago about uh, the, his thesis called the uh, Market for Lemons. I would say that. This industry is the perfect uh, example of an industry with huge information asymmetry, where you have lots of people giving advice based on, you know, this extreme compact uh, uh, wall of uh, information that they are the ones who interpret in a in a way that the client doesn't really get. So, uh, mm. knowledge is power. That. Yeah, very much mm. so. Definitely so. So you mentioned there that you got into analytics 10 years ago. So at that time, Google Analytics would have been very different to how it is now. Uh, There's all kinds of new things coming out all the time on analytics, more insights, which I guess makes it more and more complex. So what what does Needle do that makes life easier for most people who find difficulty in interpreting their web stats? Yeah, well, I I would say that... um the uh, the evolution of google analytics is that uh they're adding more and more stuff uh, uh and like 10 years ago the the um uh the threshold to uh, to entry uh was very high and it's even higher today so i mean i'm still learning about stuff in there and it's uh it's hard to keep up so i i couldn't imagine starting out from scratch today that's like a very steep ladder to climb before you are able to do anything. And you can see that they're implementing stuff to make that easier, Uh, but it's such a big beast. And I think that what Needle does uh, 
that makes life easier if you're a Google Analytics user is that we kind of turn the data upside down. So when when you're starting in Google Analytics, you're going with the top level reports and digging your way down to find stuff. Uh, what we're doing is we're taking that data, turning it upside down and finding uh, the segments that uh, provide you know, strong signals towards your goals uh, and put them to the top and prioritize them in, in terms of what could have the biggest impact on your business. Uh, Definitely so. Now yeah. you mentioned two words there. So the first first thing I wanted to say is most websites out there have Google Analytics on there. I would think it's must be ninety percent plus which are using Google Analytics. So when we talk about Google Analytics users, we're really talking about everyone who has a website, more or less. But another word that you mentioned was segment. So just for the benefit of the listeners on the podcast, could you define segment? Because that is a word associated with Google Analytics that most people want to come across? Yeah, so I think that's that's the key thing. And that's uh, a segment is basically a subset of the data. So imagine you look at all the sessions to your, to your site. Uh, now, you could slice in that data uh, with like... Uh, lots of different dimensions. So Google Analytics has 250 different dimensions, more or less. Uh, and for instance, one of them is what kind of device you're using. So you're slicing the data in three different segments and one they, they would be uh, laptop, uh, tablet, and mobile. So the mobile traffic would be a segment of that traffic. And then you can segment it further by looking at which country is this mobile traffic coming from, uh, what time of day, what part of the site, uh, which are staying for longer than 10 seconds and so on. So it's, it's just an endless combination of different dimensions combined into smaller and smaller segments. Uh, so that's what Needle is doing. It's cross-checking all these different combinations of dimensions, creating the segments and identifying the ones that have the biggest conversion rates, highest bounce rate, or uh, the biggest overall impact on the, on the goals. Great stuff. So the, the concept of need is to present those segments very clearly so they don't have to be discovered and dug around for, and to show which ones have the biggest impact on your success and the ones which are taken most away from your success. That's basically the entire idea, yes. So... What Needle is doing is doing the boring digging part. So when we, for example, present uh, a top Needle for you saying that, uh, oh, this browser uh, causes a very high bounce rate or a very low conversion rate, it's up to you as a user to think about why is that? Is there a technical reason or is it something else? What can I do about it? Could I stop remarketing towards uh, those browser users or... Uh, people from that country uh, and and sort of build a story and a business case out of that. So a very short story about what's going on with the data. And it's up to you as a decision maker to say, does this make sense or not? Sure. Yes. And so that formula that you're talking about, that is the philosophy of Needle, where we look at our segmented data and pull out the segments having the most positive effect and the segments having the most negative effect. Is that what you would call a formula for effective Google Analytics use? Yeah, yeah, I, I think there's, I mean, you, you want to create a, a, a simple uh, a view of the world as possible to be able to maintain uh, your nose above uh, the water level because the fact is that you, we live in a time where you have unlimited options to do lots of different stuff and very limited resources. So you have to prioritize. So the easiest way to prioritize is to do more of what works and do less of what doesn't work. Um, what I've seen as a consultant for the last 10 years is that I think most people are spending way more time on things that doesn't work than the things that actually works. Sure. So, so in, yeah. in some ways there, there's this um, 
great business rule, the 80-20 rule, whereas most of the success of our business is in that 20% and most of the wastage in our business is in that 80% that we spend most of our time on. Do you believe that good analytics use and Needle as an app can help you focus on the 20%? Yes, uh, I do. And uh, we, we actually we have some kind of experimental uh, Pareto uh, algorithms uh, lurking in the background, not ready to be released yet, but actually reading about the 80-20 rule was uh, probably the starting spark of uh, inspiration to to start with this at all. So it's, it's, a, it's a way to help people focus on the, the big things that affect the business. So... Great stuff. So, Ricard, let's say we have a new business stepping out into the online world for the first time. And they've been going a couple of months, and for the first time, they log into their Google Analytics account. What would you recommend they look for? Well, that's, um, I would, of course, have recommended them to start uh, to look at the Analytics account before they launch their web page uh, to. Uh, start with the question, where are we going? Uh, what, what is it we're trying to achieve? Are we getting leads to sign up? Uh, how do we track that? Is it a formula or is it an e-commerce transaction? So you just make sure that you have a simple goal tracking in place. Uh, that would be number one, uh, because otherwise I would say, don't go into analytics because you're just going to get lost. Uh, there's too much data in there uh, and it won't tell you anything of importance if you don't have a goal set. Mm. Uh, that, that's where I would start. But if you're looking at it for the first time, I would say, yeah, go into the, the top level report. I always go into uh, the acquisition reports to yep. see what what are my main sources of traffic sure. uh, and how do they perform. Um, uh, what, what's, uh, what's the traffic driving my business? Uh, I mean, for, for an older business that's going digital, they will probably see a lot of direct traffic due to their brand. But if you're starting out from scratch, you have to build your presence and you have to pay for it. So, uh, I, I mean, a healthy brand has a lot of direct traffic. Uh, and you, you sort of can, when you've looked at enough uh, analytics traffic, you sort of can intuitively feel what kind of company it is. And you can almost see on the direct traffic, if it's on mobile, you can see that, oh, those are TV spikes. Uh, mm. uh, but but that's, that's not something that's going to happen the first time you go in there. So uh, I would say uh, start with the goal and then just ask yourself the question, what's working? What's, what's causing these goals to happen? Uh, and what are we doing about it? Good advice. And that concept of setting up some kind of conversion is often where, as an advertising agency, we find a lot, so many new clients haven't even got any kind of conversion tracking set up. So that means that they never know what's working and what isn't. Do you find that's a case in your experience too? Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, uh, when if you want to be really uh, mean about it, you you, you have the old uh, wanna maker quote: uh, uh, "Half of my advertising money is spent <laughs> is is wasted. I just don't know which half." And I would say to to most of the people online today, it's like ninety percent of your ad spend is wasted, and you, we we know exactly which one, but you're not doing anything about it. So, uh, so yes. You could be extremely much more efficient with everything you do online if you have the goal tracking set, but otherwise you're just shooting in the dark. Uh, and I, there's there's a huge uh, learning curve for for uh, the decision makers out there, and they're swamped with all other stuff dealing with internal organizations, so they don't have the time to learn. So mm-hmm. they have to rely on consultants. Some of these consultants make good money out of billing them by the hour. So they have no in incentive to, to help them out in that sense, which is kind of uh, 
yeah, a market for lemons, if you will. So <laughs> definitely so. Ricard, you have quite a few competitors appearing now who offer Google Analytics help via an app. Why do you believe you've all appeared in the last 12, 18 months? Well, I would say that uh, I would say that it's probably because uh, the thing I just said. There's there's just uh, too much frustration with uh, the market as it is today, uh, and the ecosystem is is huge. There's well, I, there are no official figures, but people expect like sixty million websites to have Google Analytics implemented. So. That means some of them, if not a majority, rely on Google Analytics to, to make business decisions uh, in, in one way or another. So they need advice on how to get that working. And most of them probably can't afford a consultant. They don't have the time to learn. So there is the need for something else. Definitely um, so. And that's, yeah. that's where Needle and your competitors step in. Yeah, Exactly. Great stuff. So what do you believe is different about Needle to some of those other competitors out there? Well, I would say that I, when we look at our competitors, and, and when we say competitors, we look at basically everything that's in the data web analytics field that uh, provides something. Uh, we think that we're, I mean, we're basically a, a service on top of Google Analytics that uh, automates the analytics process. And we don't think there's anything quite like that uh, because, uh, number one, uh, we have uh, our prioritization algorithm that identifies these segments and prioritizes them in terms of business impact. So there's do. there's no one else doing that. And uh, number two is that it saves so much time in, in presenting these segments rather than giving you a report, which is just uh, uh, an aggregated way of presenting the same data that's within analytics today already. So we're, we're really working with the data in, in a way that we haven't really seen uh, our competitors mm -hmm. doing. So. I would agree with both of those. I think those two are, you know, the, the two of the biggest things you do. I think another one is actually the way that you present the information on screen because it's so instant to, you know, to look at one of your needles and see exactly what percentage of traffic it refers to, uh, how much better it's performing or worse if it's, if it's um, not such a positive needle compared to your average and what the potential is should you grow it. I think that's a really great way of presenting those little data insights. Whereas I, I would say that lots of the others, as you say, focus on being a report. So really, maybe the, your competitors are more about reporting to your clients in a more visual way by creating a PDF document or whatever it might be. Whereas you're really about single insights that you can go and do something with. You might target that audience with online advertising. You might, you might just create the audience and exclude it if it is a, a negative audience for you. So I think that that's also one of your greatest, greatest assets. Well, thank you very much. And uh, you absolutely nailed it. That's, that's what we're all about. So uh, when we're, we're it's, it's like a mantra we're having when we're trying to uh, prioritize what we want to do in our backlog. It's like, this is not a dashboard <laughs> product. So we're, we don't do dashboards. Now, now it's coming along some kind of uh, info uh, on that side uh, soon, but uh, it's it's not about uh, overwhelming you with data, but just presenting the exact amount of data you need to make a decision or to to understand what's going on. And what we've seen also from some agencies uh, is that they really appreciate the kind of the format we're presenting. So they're just taking a screen grab, putting it in the presentations, and showing it to the clients, saying, "Hey." we need to get the uh, mobile bounce rate down or whatever uh, sure. because it, it makes it a no-brainer. So uh, is your storytelling rather than having to do something uh, uh, and massage the data out of uh, Google Analytics? Very much so. So, Ricard, are there any other 
analytics tools or even web marketing tools that you recommend alongside your own? Oh, oh, there's, I mean, there's tons of tools. And uh, I mean, I personally, I, I love trying out new tools and uh, now you can't see it and it's kind of pathetic now that we're talking, but I noticed that I'm wearing a mixed panel t-shirt. So, <laughs> uh, but I, I would say that the, the fun thing about all these tools that, that are coming out is that they're easily accessible uh, and they are insanely powerful and they're so easy to implement. And uh, some of them are free. Most of them are free. Uh, uh, and they together they make a perfect marketing uh, technology stack. So I would say that you start out with uh, Google Tag Manager uh, and put your Google Analytics account in there. Uh, and they've updated Tag Manager a lot over the last year. So it's easy to set your triggers uh, to fire into analytics. Uh, and it's very easy to update uh, everything from clicks and so on. Sure. And then it's very easy to put in Hotjar, for instance, which is a wonderful tool to record sessions, mm -hmm. which tells you a completely different story than the uh, uh, click view uh, side uh, from analytics, where you can basically you see where people hesitate uh, in formulas and so on in, in a way that uh, I mean, used Crazy Egg a lot before, but I, I really like the screen recording side of of hotjar and i use that a lot um, and then of course you have a mixed panel for for analytics after your conversion basically where you want to set uh, events and trigger trigger email and the notifications which is uh, absolutely wonderful so great tools yeah yeah i can totally see how those are great for someone like yourself with a history in analytics as well so it all makes sense so uh, so what next for needle well, uh, what's what's next for us as a as a company is trying to grow, and as a product, we're just making our way out of the beta and moving into a paid plan uh, in the middle of February, something like that. So uh, we have some really really interesting stuff uh, in store, uh, which we're launching, uh, uh, and we're splitting up Needle into a basic and a pro package where where Needle Basic is the same kind of product you have today, but we're adding pro features where you can control and build your own custom segments and you can add your own uh, dimensions as well. So you will be able to pull in your custom dimensions if you have those uh, and uh, you will be able to create data stacks on pretty much anything you would like. Uh, and we have also rebuilt our... Um, engine for the third time basically uh, and uh, this allows us to pull in uh, uh, external data yeah. so for instance uh, we can do a crunch where uh, where we look at the weather data uh, and see how that correlates with your conversions and uh, instantly it pops up uh, like uh, Heavy, heavy, uh, heavy, cloudy weather uh, is good for your conversion in some instance, and uh, and uh, bad for for others. But it's it's kind of fun to tell a different story, and so we're we're using that engine to uh, cut and slice through the analytics data. So instead of reporting hour by hour, we could uh, tell you something uh, uh, rather than you have the weekend or you have the working hours or you have the lunch hour. Uh, sort of like that that's an interesting idea where you're looking at these external factors and you know what one could be the weather one could be a major national or well, international event perhaps like a world cup of football you know how does that affect traffic yeah. through a site yeah and uh, i know what one of our clients last summer noticed a huge drop in sales when we had this you know probably the only really hot weekend that we get here in yeah. the UK in the summer, and everybody's outside, everybody's at the beach. So, you know, so they're not on their computers. Yeah. And the, the effect of that on their sales was huge. No, I, I, I experienced the same thing lots of years ago when when I was uh, coming back on a Monday uh, and I just saw a huge drop in our sales and I was like, this is, this is a disaster. And I was just digging through Google Analytics and uh, uh, 
just trying to find what had happened. And all my colleagues around me were like, oh, what did you do this weekend? The beautiful weather. And the, it didn't strike me until uh, like a couple of days after. Oh, yeah, it was the first day with, of sun this year. So, <laughs> so uh, the problem with the data is if you allow it to paint the entire uh, story, you will miss out on some obvious uh, things. So we're trying to put some obvious things in there as well. So, yeah, combining it with calendar dates like Christmas. Yeah, of course, sure. that's going to affect. Um, so, yeah. Very good. Excellent. So where can we find you online? Well, obviously, our webpage, uh, needleanalytics.com. Uh, and then we have uh, we have some activity on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter. Uh, however, we are very uh, – it's, it's me, my uh, dear colleagues, Andrew and Phil, uh, and we're working uh, like crazy monkeys with the product right now. So <laughs> we're not very active on the social networks, but uh, we're very active. If you reach out to us and we try to, so so if there's anything you would want, uh, hook up with us on LinkedIn because that's that's where uh, we think uh, uh, our core audience uh, thrives rather than on Twitter. You will probably not see us on Instagram for a long while. <laughs> Makes total sense. Yeah. So, Ricard, it's been a pleasure having you on the podcast. We've learned Very a lot nice about Needle. Great. I'm glad you've enjoyed it. Is, is there any final message you'd like to give everybody? Well, apart from uh, thank you for having me on here, it's, uh, I uh, take the moment to do a shameless plug about uh, our end of beta offer. So we still have a couple of days uh, running in the beta. And if you uh, sign up, you will have access to our 50% lifetime deal. So that's never going to come back again and uh, sign up. Uh, try it out, uh, claim the discount, and you're free to drop out of it anytime you like. So There we go. And I can totally say it's definitely worth a go. We found it very insightful. So thank you for creating Needle, and thank you for being on the podcast. Well, thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. My name is Phil Byrne. Thank you for listening. This podcast was brought to you today by Positive Sparks, your pay-per-click coaching and consulting agency. If you would like three tips on how to grow your business using pay-per-click, visit us at positivesparks.com forward slash three tips. Until next time, goodbye.